Okay, welcome to 3.4. This will be the last section for Unit 3 on plate tectonics, and we're going to talk about uh, mantle plumes and hot spots, as well as coral reef uh, evolution. So what is a mantle plume and what's a hot spot? Mantle plume is an interplate, which means it does not happen at the margins for the most part. Interplate volcanism centered on columnar areas of magma. So what we basically have is we have molten rock coming up that's mafic in composition, and it actually produces column, columnar uh, uh, igneous rock formations. A uh, very famous one of these is Devil's Tower in Wyoming. Um, an example of a uh, inter interplatal uh, volcanism section would be like Iceland, which is a very fast flowing uh, hot spot. There are volcanoes on the seafloor, and they usually occur in a sequence, like the Hawaiian Islands. There are island chains, uh, which record plate motion, like the Hawaiian Islands. Mantle plumes may extend to the mantle core boundary um, if we get a very hot mantle flow, like the Hawaiian Islands. Few occur near the Mid-Ocean Ridge, and that's like Iceland. Here's a shockwave that I actually... Um, just made a video and posted it up on our, our YouTube site, but you can access it from this link down here, or you can just type in hotspot SWF, and if you actually say WWU EDU, hotspot shockwave file, you'll get this, and it actually um, shows a period of 10 years making three volcanoes. The first one, this one, the oldest one, was over this, so about a million, uh, about a million years, or about nine million years before present. And as the plate moved from left to right, um, it actually got off the hot spot, and then it popped up a new volcano, which is a little younger. And then that one moved over, and here's the next one. And if we actually go into the future, the plate will continue to move. This one will eventually get cut off, and this will actually pump another volcano someplace over here and this is like the Hawaiian Island chain and here's an example of the Hawaiian Island chain actually showing you the plate, plate motion so if you take a look this is the island of Hawaii this is uh, um, either Kilauea probably the most active part or it could actually be another volcano up there which is Mauna Loa and if you take a look we have another volcano there um, less than a million years old, we move over and it's 1.3 to 1.8. We go over here and it's 2.2 to 3.3. And you can get the idea that as we move in this line, uh, we actually get older and older and older volcanoes. And the hot spot is stationary. It's a mantle plume that comes up with mafic rock and puts up a mafic shield type volcano. Very wide base, very gentle sloping volcano. And as the plate continues to move in that direction, this volcano will eventually not get fed, and a new plate will be there for a new volcano. And that's what happened for all these. These are all extinct volcanoes, um, including some seamounts and sea uh, guyotes and other things, which we're going to talk about here too. So if you take a look at it, you can actually see the Emperor Seamount is part of this chain. It gets older as you go this direction. And it actually looks like for a while, the Pacific Ocean, when it was here, that point the plate was actually moving pretty much straight north and then what happened is 250 million years ago North America started to move this direction and started pushing the plate toward the west as well as being moved toward the north up the sea Pacific rise so now we actually get a northwestern motion of the plate and you can see Midway is 27 million years old so it gets uh, there they are there's Midway right there Seamounts and Guyots Seamounts are a conical underwater volcano, like these, and they just haven't reached the surface. Guyotes are flat-topped underwater volcanoes that look like this, and what we actually think happened is their formation, their formation by erosion, and they've moved away from the mid-ocean ridge. So basically, here's the mid-ocean ridge. It's someplace off in this direction. Uh, we get an island that pops up, and the volcano stops erupting. What happens is the top part gets weathered and eroded, and it erodes uh, close to sea level. But because we actually put mass on top of the sea floor through isostasy, these volcanoes sink, they subside, and that underwater volcano can be some now, now thousand feet uh, or more underneath the surface. They sink farther from sea level, again through isostasy, and here's a volcano from sea level, and you can see it actually stops erupting, and it's got a nice fringing coral reef on it, stops erupting, and eventually becomes a flat water, under, flat topped underwater volcano that will continue to subside, and this is the Guyot stage.
So we have a seamount growing to become a volcanic island, and then we have uh, guyots. Coral reef development. Basically, Charles Darwin came up with this life cycle of coral reefs, and it actually depends on a subsiding volcanic island. So you put up a volcanic, a volcanic island up there, and it subsides or erodes through time. Large calcium carbonate structures is what a coral reef is. Uh, they need warm water, 75-ish degree or maybe to 85 degrees, no hotter, no, cold, no colder than that. They need shallow water because they need sunlight, and they need relatively clear water because of sunlight. They do have a photosynthetic uh, algae growing inside the actual coral polyp, which uh, help provide food for the coral. Uh, we have a fringing reef if we actually, um, if the island is there, and I'll actually show you a picture of these on the back. This is the youngest type of reef. If it gets a little older, we call them barrier reef, like they are in um, the famous one off Australia's uh, east coast. And then we can have an atoll, which is the, which I think is the most beautiful of them. So what we get is we, we have the volcano, and notice the volcano is high up on the seafloor, and it actually is just like layer after layer after layer of mafic flows. Uh, if we have cold, um, colder water because it's not no longer erupting, uh, it's 75 to 85 degree, and we got clear water, again, no longer erupting, uh, we'll actually get coral. And to give you some idea, this is called a fringing reef, and this is what it would look like if you could not see underneath the water. If the volcano stops erupting, uh, what will happen, and pay attention to where these arrows are, because this will show relative age of fossils. So the fossils here are you know, X number of years, and the fossils there are X number of years, and the fossils there are X number. As you go out, the fossils get X minus time, because they get younger and younger and younger. But eventually what happens is the volcano starts to subside through isostasy. Um, it gets lower in the water. Again, these need shallow water to form. So that, uh, if the subsidence is the right amount or doesn't get too fast, we'll actually get coral just growing on top of coral, on top of coral, on top of coral, on top of coral. And we'll actually have this nice barrier island, which will help protect um, the area that's inside. If the volcanic island continues to subside and it's no longer sticking above sea level, what we get is an atoll. And the atoll actually is a really beautiful um, picture. Here's the same picture I showed you with the seamount and the guyote. Um, if the volcano goes down a little differently, we get the um, fringing, we get barrier, and we get atoll formation, and eventually if it does keep subsiding or if it subsides too quickly so the coral can't grow, we'll get a flat-topped guyote with actually a coral skeleton on top of it. Paleo-oceanography. Um, from looking at uh, paleomagnetism, looking at uh, Pangaea, looking at age of fossils, looking at age of coral reef, looking at hot spot volcanic activity, we actually see that there are changes in shape, composition, and character of the oceans through time. Ocean bases are created, like in the Atlantic Ocean, and they're destroyed like they are in the Pacific. Land masses grow with accretion. Um, a lot of California, Oregon, and some of Washington was actually picked up as North America moved over and ran into island masses that were up there, and uh, so they can actually grow through accretion. Pangaea into Laurasia and Gondwana, so we're actually changing a large whole earth into two very large land masses, a large northern one and a large southern one, and they continue to split apart, and they give rise to the Atlantic Ocean. There's, there's Laurasia, North America, and um, Europe and Asia. There's the Tethys Sea. Uh, we have Africa, South America, Antarctica, India, and uh, Australia in what's called Gondwana or Gondwana land. And it actually starts breaking north south first. And that gives rise to a very young uh, uh, Atlantic Ocean. And we do have, uh, you can see a large inland sea in the middle of North America. And they eventually rise up and the sea flows into the ocean. Uh, we have different shaped land masses here than what you'd normally would expect. You can see India's way down here. You can see Antarctica is there, and Australia is down here, really close to the South Pole, which is why we get all that glaciation there. Future of continental positions. If we actually get the Red Sea to continue to split, if we have Africa continuing to split because they're on a divergent area, 
Um, we can predict current plate motions. Uh, we can actually look, predict from that the Red Sea is going to continue to widen. The Arabian Peninsula will get farther from Africa. East Pacific rise may actually become a narrow sea as it connects with the Red Sea or the Gulf of Aden and the uh, Indian Ocean way down here. The Atlantic Ocean will continue to widen and the Pacific Ocean will continue to narrow. This is another shock wave, which you can get to there, and you can actually see the wave plate tectonics, and I'll make a video on this at some point. Um, active with spreading centers, you can see active faulting. You can see reverse faulting, normal faulting, or rifting, volcanic centers, plate tectonic zones, as well as earthquakes, and see that they're all tied together to give us the idea of these tectonic plates moving around. That's the end of Unit 3, um, where we actually see from this picture, we start with Gondwana, we see that that actually starts to split up. Antarctica moves towards the South Pole and becomes steady. Australia separates. India moves farther north and ends up in the northern hemisphere. That's a southern view of plate tectonics. Thanks for stopping by. And again, that's the end of, end of Unit 3. Where we head now, Unit 4 is the only thing I know. I'm not sure which one it is, but I will know soon. <laughs>